meeting held on the 21st of June 1979, members debated a motion put forward by the late Kel Tremain and seconded by Ron Ebbett. The motion was that the club's 25th anniversary project be the establishment of a Taradol Rotary Club educational bursary and $2,500 be set aside each year from auction funds or other fundraising activities. The first grants were made in 1985, the academic year following the club's 25th jubilee. Over the next 25 years, grants totalling over $187,000 have been made to 228 young students, mainly to assist them get started on a tertiary qualification. While many of them follow the traditional paths of going to one of the major universities, a growing number have been assisted with the funding of courses here at the Eastern Institute of Technology. But to learn how it all started, let us talk to those who were involved back at the time the fund was established. In 1978-79, the year Bob Twaddle was president, the Youth Committee with Cal Tremaine as director met at Ron Ebbett's place. During the meeting, discussion took place concerning the problems young people were experiencing raising funds to continue with their education. Ron, that must have been quite an interesting meeting with some pretty good discussion. Well, it actually started because uh, our second-born daughter in 1979, I think I just uh, finished at uh, my own up, and uh, she pestered me because she had friends uh, going overseas on Rotary exchange, student exchanges, and I said, no way for a start, but she pestered and pestered, so I said, right, um, um, you can go. I had the idea that I could afford to send her to the States, but there must be a, a heck of a lot of parents that couldn't, and that's what I put to the meeting originally, that um, surely we, that the Rotary Club of Trowdale could start a fund that when we could search for, uh, for uh, students that were good enough to go without, um, and their parents couldn't afford it. So that's how it really started. The proposal was brought to the directors under the chairmanship of Bob Twaddle. Well, what are your recollections of this event? Well, that was almost the end of my year. And we made our money out of the auction, which was very late in, the, in arriving in our pocket. And uh, this was part of the discussion on how we should, how we should spend that money. But then um, uh, Cal, of course, produced uh, his rabbit out of the hat and uh, our, our committee thought it was a, a very good idea. It landed on the plate of the incoming directors because we uh, only had four or five days left in our rotary year. Uh, so, but uh, G was very, he was the, the vice president and he was very favourable towards it. Motion put to the club recorded by the secretary Bruce McLeod on the 21st of June 79 was that the club's 25th anniversary project be the establishment of a Taradol Rotary Club educational bursary and that $2,500 be set aside each year from auction funds or other fundraising activities for this. The motion was carried through but not unanimously. Um, so there must have been some discussion of the negative. I can remember a couple of um, isolated cases at that meeting where um, I think one or two people stood up because this was a very first for, for Rotary where money was put aside into a capital fund and Rotary was seen as spending everything that they earned. And for, for a capital fund to be put aside never to be seen again but only the interest from it uh, was something foreign to, many, to a couple of members and that was the only objection. And it was really not an objection, it was just a point that they brought forward. Two and a half thousand dollars was to be set aside each year up to a maximum figure of 15,000. Um, out together with the interest. Of course, those days, uh, $15,000 was a lot of money for a capital fund. In mm. 1981, the fund was converted to a trust by John Lister. Ian Kepi and Peter Sugden, you were both of your original trustees. What was the purpose of setting up a trust? My recollection is that there was some taxation issue that was involved, and uh, at the time, um, John Lister felt it would be far easier if the whole thing was handled through the trust. I can recollect the, uh, the reason John brought it up was the fact that we wanted an arm's length situation from club funds yeah. Yeah. and this yeah. would bring in finance from outside the club uh, such as club cha uh, pub charities etc and this was so important but if we had it within just within the club funds then people would not be so keen to support it and of course then we had benefactors outside the club who gave us money including pub charities. I do remember that my main concern was to 
make sure we built the capital up. And I remember writing a letter to the directors or reporting to them that I thought a sum of $5,000 should be set aside annually for, for the, uh, the trust. Kel was, I think, a very appropriate person uh, to head the uh, trust. His main causes were crippled children or um, save the children and so on, and it was very appropriate. The whole Tremaine family have always been orientated towards uh, helping. This year was the year in which we formed the trust. Yes. So that was 1980, 81, and the, the trustees were John Lister, myself and Pete Simon. In 1983, Tom MacDonald, following a talk to the club by Kel Tremaine, moved the capital to be raised to $20,000 and that the club support the trust funds with an annual grant of $1,000. Bob Trotter, do you remember this proposal? Did it go down well? Well, I certainly, I was very keen to second it. In 1984, the club celebrated its 25th anniversary under the presidency of Bill Beaton. Bill asked his director of club services to serve on the first selection committee headed by Cal Tremaine. Bob McCoy, you were on this committee. What do you remember of this occasion? I'd only just joined Rotary a couple of years before, before I became club service director under Bill Beaton's stewardship. And um, because I was teaching um, at Napier Boys High at the time and in education, he just turned to me and he said, well, can you help the committee that I've appointed to get suitable applicants? So I duly said, yes, I know George McCaw, the uh, guidance counselor at Taradale High School, I'll just ring George. And uh, I told George what the story is, and he said, I'll ring you back. The girl he came up with was a girl called Chris Kraftchek. Um, now, the family was dysfunctional, um, and the head split. It was um, so bad that Chris, at the age of 16, left the family home, and she had to fund herself into private boarding. She did this working at uh, McDonald's with Bill Beaton, Sheena and Bill remember her from, mm. from those times. So here was a girl who, who, who at the time would never have been able to go on to university without that sort of thing. We have to remember at this stage that Kel's great emphasis was on trying to provide funding for students in need, students whose parents couldn't help them go to university. And even though uh, we didn't have the problem with student fees, they still had accommodation and all of those sorts of problems. So um, the, uh, that was she and a girl called Sandra Ogilvy were the first two girls that um, were awarded money by the, the trust fund and uh, it, it got off to a great start. Well, what was it? Ian, you served as a trustee for four years from 1989 to 1992. The pattern sort of developed where we would interview up to about 12 candidates each time. The candidates were, not, were given to us by George McCaw, as Bob mentioned before, and from locally here, Mike Kilty, who was also on our committee at the time. We actually used to meet at the high school and do the interviews there as well. And the candidate used to come from virtually all the high schools, even from Hastings. But at one stage we decided, hey, let's stick to the local ones, and we limited the, the applicants from Taradale and Napier. And as I said before, we usually had about a dozen to interview, and out of those five would be selected. And at that time, we could actually distribute about $1,000 each to five of them. 1992, Kel Tremaine died. Bob Napstein was president. Well, we were all very shocked uh, when he did die, because he was sort of at the background all the way in formation of the trust and uh, so um, out of respect to his early involvement uh, it was suggested his name should be embodied in the name of the trust and a new trust was to be formed. Nevin Dawson uh, was a member of our club at that point, a prominent lawyer in the town and Nevin uh, indicated to us that we could become a tax-free charitable trust and so he at no cost to uh, the current trust rewrote the deed and so uh, the trust from that date on has had complete tax-free status. The new trust was formed and as you say named after Kill and you had Clive Adams, Jock Morris, Ron Ebert 
and John Campbell as trustees. That'd be right. Yeah. Now, John Morris was the first chairman of the Caltrain Memorial Educational Trust and served for four years. The trust fund stood at twenty-eight thousand dollars. John, what is your memory of the responsibility of managing the fund? Well, it was mainly maintaining that capital. That was, I felt, was my main concern. That we we were just giving out roughly just a few thousand each year and, and not cutting into the capital. And that's when I, in one of my reports, as I've said, I wrote and asked for a 5,000 annual grant and then I went into the share market. I did start the first investment in the share market. I remember when I reported this to the club, the looks of horror all <laughs> round and one past member, he's passed in every way now, <laughs> he reared up and said, what do you mean by equities? And I said, oh, well, I'm going to the share market. I've got to maintain the capital. Oh, God, he was horrified. Yeah, Ron Ward served on the trust when it was chaired by the late Gavin Thomas. Well, what's your memory working for the trust as it was then? At that time, we were very concerned with the fact we were not getting applicants from the local schools and Gavin was very interested in getting a little bit more interest from them. We produced a flyer for the schools and presented it to the schools and then uh, he and I went round to some of the secondary schools and tried to drum up business from, from local schools rather than applicants coming from outside of Taradale. In saying that though, we also looked at the children who applied who were originally resident in Tarada but was, were uh, doing their education in places like Iona. And I remember selecting a girl from Iona, uh, from a Tarada farming area, uh, who was working her way or trying to pay her own way through her um, college because their farm was not very profitable at the time. And I remember her well because of the, at the interview her hands were stained red. But I'd been spraying gorse because my father can't afford to spray the gorse other than employ me. She was a very nice girl and I, she eventually got an award from our scholarship. From 1996 to 2002 there was a period of major fundraising. At the centre of this was Kevin Moore who also served as trust chairman from 1998 to 1999. Kevin, you'd like to tell us about these major fundraisers. Yeah, it was an idea I had uh, which grew out of a friendship that I had with Kel. Uh, I used to go to rugby matches with him both here in New Zealand and in the, in the UK when I was living in Scotland. He was a good friend. Uh, I'd learned a lot off him helping him during the street auctions at the uh, club ran. And so uh, the idea of raising some money first came up uh, about 1990, and you might recall we did a big night with Sir Peter Blake uh, for the Child Cancer Foundation. So in 92 and 97 and 2002 we did it three times more. Uh, the first time was with Peter Johnson who was captain of the Wallabies during Curl's reign. So he played against Curl and remembered him well. Uh, the second one we had John Hart who was then All Black selector. And lastly of course we had Steve Williams who is uh, Tiger Woods caddy. We ran uh, gala nights with auction items uh, uh, and uh, we had a golf game, a tournament of course with Steve Williams and all in all those three nights put $97,000 into the trust. That's big money, that was huge impetus, that gave so much more funds given to be given out to the children. Yeah, one of the reasons for getting involved in doing it this way was because the club was still struggling in a, a little bit with a, because we only had a little bit of money and the capital fund and we weren't really uh, generating enough cash to make some worthy grants. Uh, I might say by now the number of people applying had grown, uh, that we needed a larger capital sum. Um, and I might just comment this too, I still think today that most of our club members just don't realise the value of this trust and how much money it's given away. It's actually given away more money than the capital value of the trust. Over the last 10 years the trust has been chaired by Bob McCaw and during this period the trust grew into a fund of about $155,000 and it distributes about $9,000 each year. Bob, that's an amazing achievement. What are the significant changes that have taken place under your stewardship? 
I followed Kevin Moore as chairman of the trust in 2000 and um, I, I've held that role ever since. The first thing to do was to continue with the policies which had been developed by um, previous uh, chairman of the trust that we've already heard of, they've heard from Jock, how they started to um, try to build the trust funds through investment and equities. This was something that Kevin certainly was keen on and did in his time. The trust now is managed by um, Andrew Pearson of Somerset Smith. Thanks to uh, Kevin's efforts, which we've just heard of, the uh, trust has uh, grown to 150,000 through judicious uh, reinvestment of funds. And I'd also like to point out that we um, got $6,000 last year from uh, the trust run by a Rotarian, Ross Craig in Auckland, who uh, gave us 6000 We have had private donations, small donations, but uh, all of these have helped the fund to grow to its current level of 150000 Probably the most significant thing, though, was that round about 1991-92, the government introduced a student loan scheme. That immediately took away the hardship. There was no reason from now on why students couldn't go on to tertiary education. More recently, the uh, student allowance program has developed to the point that now, uh, it's means tested, but uh, if the family income um, is round about uh, only $28,000, these kids can get up to, um, what is it, seven up about $156 a week, isn't it? Yes. Round about that. And it only cuts out at about $90,000, $98,000. Another thing too is that we, were found, we found ourselves competing with all sorts of awards. The Mills uh, Award, the Dobson uh, Award. Students started to, uh, give significant funds to Duxes. Every Dux that comes in front of us will tell us they've got the Otago Dux Award or the Auckland Dux Award. So that means that the Kel Tremaine Award was becoming just another award and we were out there competing. One, uh, George McCaw told me at one stage, 30 other scholarships are out there competing for these students. Because of that we decided we had to do something to attract the kids back again. So we introduced a scholarship. But it had a very dramatic effect because it was $5,000 for a period of three years. Um, immediately the quality of applicants rose significantly. It became too good because these students were winning uh, NZQA scholarships up to five to $10,000. Now we don't give those kids more money. So when we make the scholarship selection, it goes to somebody just a little bit lower than the ones that are creaming off all the higher level money. But the scholarship still has to go to a scholar and therefore we are still looking for students who at least pass one scholarship in the NZQA uh, level four, it is scholarship examination. That scholarship has been going six years and this year Tremaine's have taken a huge interest in it and Tremaine's are now sponsoring the scholarship every year to the tune of $5,000 a year. This year, your business has very kindly come up with a sponsorship deal of $5,000. Can you tell us what prompted that, Simon? Look, uh, we've been good friends with Terrell Rotary for mm. some time now, and um, Bob McCaw especially. And we just look at it as a great way to extend mm. our involvement in the community by being able to support people's kids and grandkids um, in that next mm. step of going to tertiary education. We're known as a family business, we're known as very strong in the community, and obviously we push that from our company's perspective. And so, you know, we, we know there's benefits out there, we know it spreads our name, we know it's, a, it's good for our company and it keeps us with the integrity that we um, run our business on. And uh, from us to you, thank you so very much sincerely. No, it's a pleasure and it's really, um, we're delighted to be involved with the Tower Rotary Club. Paul well, Twatter, you are currently the Deputy Chairman of the Trust. Uh, does the element of hardship still guide the trusting decision making? Well, it does in some instances. Often we find that a the husband has left the wife and the, and the family uh, and there's no, no provision. We also come across people from uh, DIT uh, who are trying to rebuild their lives and they might come to us in their 40s. So following on and logically from that, Sel and Dye, the current trustee, um, applicants are required to provide budget information and why? <laughs> in most cases, um, the students uh, 
be going away from home probably for the first time, it, they're going to be spending quite a lot of money. Um, not so much in the first year, but as they go further on, they're going to require a lot of money in their second or third year. So they have to understand the, the value of money, and it's quite interesting when they do bring along their budgets. Some of them have no idea um, of how to do a budget, and some of them are pretty good. So we go through the budgets Four, when we interview them. 4,300, I think. Yeah, they are last estimated it. Maybe next year, eight thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make it four or five. Um, textbooks, do you know how much they could be yet? No. They had a zero administration fee okay. and their student levy fee yeah. and stuff, so I just didn't know. They don't have to come back to an account for spending, do they? Things like no, 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 they don't. Are there other criteria for selection? Well, they have to have a, a proven academic ability. Um, they're wasting their time coming to us if they haven't got that. They're all around school and community record, and that's very important. Their sporting and cultural record. Um, the sporting is, 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 a, is an asset too because uh, it means they've been able to commit themselves uh, and the evidence that they've had a good saving record. Um, they must have that. The trust is obviously a success and uh, an indication would be possibly the number of applicants you're receiving yearly. I think uh, this last year, for example, and I think it's an, uh, indicative of what's been going on recently, we had in excess of 30 applicants last year. We, we culled about three and then we interviewed the rest and this took uh, place over four days. Now we don't interview all the applicants. Uh, there is a preliminary um, sorting out of students and they're only a small number uh, who we deem not suitable to take on further. The best way is to uh, contact and the, the referees that the applicants put forward. And each trustee has a responsibility to report back on the reports from the referees and these are usually very illuminating. And then of course probably the most important of all is the interview that we, that we do with them uh, and the way in which we judge them on the criteria that have been presented, have been discussed already as well as their appearance and general uh, demeanour as well. These people are the members of the club who have guided and developed the Kelvin Tremaine Memorial Education Trust to what it is today. From a small sub-account, started way back in 1979, the fund has grown to $150,000. Earnings from that capital base have grossed $185,000 in a period of 26 years. The sum has been distributed to about 200 young Hawke's Bay students and helped them get a start in higher education.